thank you. Um, I'm a little nervous, okay? There's uh, two things in the world that scare me, public speaking and height. <laughs> I'll get over it. You know, TED format ev events have provided a forum for brilliant ideas from the best minds, doctors, inventors, scientists, writers, business leaders, even lawyers. I'm a mailman. That's me, I was bringing in the mail, 535 letters, one for every member of Congress. The purpose of the flight was to deliver the letters, but the message was for you. Let me quote from the letter. As a member of Congress, you have three options. You may pretend corruption does not exist. You may pretend to oppose corruption while you sabotage reform or you may actively participate in real reform. Congress ignored the letter. All the villagers did. Are you familiar with the term villagers? The villagers are uh, the people riding the gravy train, uh, working for the owners of the railroad by conning the rest of us who have to walk. The villagers know the flight happened, but they don't want the flight to have meaning. They want your thinking to conform to their mental picture. This is how the villagers see government in our capital. Special interests and multinational corporations manipulate our government directly and through lobbyist firms. This is not how our government was designed. This is how our government was designed. Just check the first three words of the Constitution if you need confirmation. Besides this diagram, there's a simple fact that the villagers don't want you to discover. The crisis of corruption is within our power to solve. I would guess most here would agree that money in politics is a major reason Congress fails to represent the people. And again, at a guess, most would agree that since members of Congress benefit from the corruption, they won't do anything about it. Getting a majority of voters to replace the scoundrels of both parties with a clear majority of reformists from both parties looks impossible, but it's not. Reform can be done with 4% of the population, just 4%. There's 100 people in this room, more or less. If the ratio was duplicated throughout the country, 96% of you could turn away, not care, or not understand, and the four folks who got it could institute reform. I'll get back to that. Let's talk about the nature of corruption in Washington. You have the Supreme Court decision, Citizens United, which allows virtually unlimited corporate money in campaigns. You have the McCutcheon decision, which removed the individual cap. If you're a billionaire, you can invest unlimited money in elections. Yet despite the flood of money, Congress spends up to 40% of their work day on the phones, raising money for their next election. So you get this. This is the House Oversight Committee on some uh, gyrocopter incident. <laughs> the House Oversight Committee has 43 members and 33 were no-shows when they needed to hear testimony on which they should design legislation and policy. You ever watch C-SPAN? Whenever the camera pans out, you see the sea of expensive, upholstered, empty chairs. Where the hell is everybody? In most cases, they're off campus, on the phones, for four hours a day, talking to rich donors, fishing for big donations. Since Congress isn't doing their homework, the leaders we elected to lead are led around by the nose by party hacks, by lobbyists, and by those arrogant villagers. The leaders we send to Congress need to do their jobs. 
And the first step of leadership is showing up. And the main reason they're AWOL is because they're chasing money. Did you know that nearly half the retired members of Congress become registered lobbyists after their public service? Now, a lobbyist is basically a hired gun. Wrong, <laughs> wrong slide. <laughs> and a hired gun is not a hero. A hired gun is, uh, is a mercenary. Would you be surprised to learn that as lobbyists, retired Congress critters make on average 14 times what they made in Congress? That works out to a cool couple of million dollars per year. The lobbyist works for a Washington law firm, often on K Street, and the law firm represents corporate clients with big money. Lobbying is a $6 billion industry in Washington and lobbyists produce nothing but preferential legislation. Special interests are buying tax breaks, government contracts, special exemptions inserted, or essential rules removed from proposed legislation. Our Congress is selling the favors of government by delaying payment of the bribe until after they leave office. I'm gonna be indiscreet. The whores who moved to the brothel of K Street were selling it while they were in the bedroom of Congress, married to us, the US citizens of the district that they married in the sacred ceremony of election. They think this prostitution is okay because it's legal and it's only legal because they write the laws. The prostitution of our government is not unopposed. Some of the finest minds, the most eth ethical, honest, principal leaders in the country are working on the, getting the money out of politics. Their groups of root strikers, Mayday, Represent Us, Wolfpack, 99 Rise, Move to Amend, Public Citizen. They're from the left, they're from the right, different methods, different groups, one goal. Get the money out of politics, so that government works for the people. You don't hear about these leaders or their groups in the media. TV networks and cable channels expect huge profits from campaign ads. More money in politics means bigger profits. Campaign finance reform might cut into their bottom line. So they won't report on the groups that I just did or talk about the story of corruption and reform. It's gonna be my job, one of them, after my trial, to be the world's ugliest cheerleader for these groups and others. <laughs> I support an all of the above approach to reform. We're gonna spread the word. There are groups with solutions Find one you're comfortable with, sign up, and stay informed. The media won't tell you what these groups will. Besides being a cheerleader, I'm cooking up a nonpartisan campaign which complements the efforts of all these groups. We the people can capture the House of Representatives and have reform fully in place in 2019. Impossible? So is flying a tiny gyrocopter from Pennsylvania all the way across the state of Maryland undetected to land on the west lawn of the Capitol building. The coup to reclaim democracy can be won in four years. You have to understand gerrymandering to get this next part. Gerrymandering creates safe, sometimes weird shaped districts for both parties by creating districts with distinct party majorities, 80% of the elections for the U.S. House of Representatives are a gimme for the party that that district was carved out to benefit. Guess what percentage of the U.S. House of Representatives won re-election in 2014? Mind you, in 2014, only 15% of voters approved of the job Congress was doing, 80% disapproved. And in 2014, with those abysmal numbers, 95% of incumbents were reelected. 
Are we really that stupid? Actually, no. Voters weren't given any options. We're going to give voters an option. Remember, I'm talking about winning a bipartisan reformist majority in the U.S. House of Representatives. I'm not talking about the Senate or the White House. Before the general election, there's a primary election. You ever hear of the primary? It's the election nobody goes to. About 12% of the general population votes in the primary. Here's a history lesson from 2014. A Tea Party unknown knocked off Republican House Majority Leader Eric Cantor in the Republican primary despite Cantor's power, name recognition, and money advantage. Cantor outspent the challenger, David Bratt, 10 to 1, and he still lost. Virginia's uh, seventh district is heavily gerrymandered, and Bratt went on to win the general election with 61% of the vote. But let's go back to the primary election where the lesson is. Bratt needed just one vote more than Cantor to win. That's 28,999. The total population of Virginia's 7th District is 758,000. Divide 29,000, which is what Bratt needed to win, by the population of Virginia's 7th District. Bratt won with only 3.81% of the residents of District 7. I've done other electoral modeling and I've come up with the same 4% number as the threshold of victory in the primaries. The Cantor upset is a template for taking a reformist majority in the U.S. House. It's not the template for Democrats defeating Republicans or Republicans defeating Democrats. This is the template for Republican reformists to take the seats of incumbent establishment Republican House members. It's the template for reformist Democrats to take the seats of sold out Democrats. How can this template become a pattern that can be duplicated throughout the country to elect a reformist majority? First, we write a contract which defines reform. Otherwise, reform becomes a meaningless, meaningless uh, buzzword for candidates to toss around. <clears throat> the contract would identify a constitutional amendment to reverse Citizens United and McCutcheon and laws which set up a wall of separation between our government and the big money that's bought our government. When the contract is written, incumbents will be invited to sign on. Some will and some won't. When they won't, we'll recruit a reformist challenger in their home district. When my trial is finished, if I'm acquitted or when I'm released, I'm going to travel the country to recruit those candidates, Republicans and Democrats, who will put the country first, before special interests, before party, and before individual gain. Those patriots exist in both parties, among regular people, in business, or as teachers, or doctors, or state-level government, and they will run for Congress to save the Republic. And I'll travel with gyro and tow to bring out the media. I have a message, and if only 4% of the residents in each district will listen and act by voting for the reformist, then together we'll claim a majority in the U.S. House of Representatives in 2018. When we have a majority in the U.S. House of Representatives, then we the people will show up in force on the ground in Washington, D.C. for a massive rally of solidarity behind our House members. Democrats, Republicans, Tea Party conservatives, liberal union members, senior citizens, veterans, even libertarians can come. <laughs> when the villagers are under siege from inside and outside the Capitol, they will accept reform. Later, they'll pretend it was their idea all along, but I don't care. 
will pass a constitutional amendment and the supporting legislation in 2019 on a totally nonpartisan basis, and that firewall will last. What happens when there's a wall of separation between our government and big money? You still have conservatives, you still have liberals, government will be pressed from all sides to do the impossible. It's messy, it's loud, it's imperfect, it's democracy. But get the money out of politics and even the politicians you don't like will be working for the common good of the people of this country and not for special interests. And that will make all the difference. The next generation is up to the task of dealing with the big issues. If, I, if we give them a level playing field where their voices will be heeded by government rather than by the villagers, the insiders, the lobbyists, and special interests, this is my dream. The title of this speech is The Letter, The Message, and The Meaning. The letter was just two sheets of paper that I signed. The message, that's this speech. I risked my life, lost my job, and I'm made to go, to go to prison because the message is that important. What's the meaning of my flight? It's up to you. You give meaning to the message because there's no meaning really in applause or fan mail or likes on Facebook or follows on Twitter. The meaning of my flight, if there is one, will be found in the intelligent civic participation of millions of Americans who become politically aware, informed, and engaged. I'm just a mailman. What I've done what I've said is all based in the confidence I have in regular Americans, humble hobbits that we are, to rise up and shake the castles of the mighty in a quest to restore for our children the honest government for the people, which is their American birthright. This must be done. This can be done. This will be done. I believe in you. Thank you.